The scene then cut back to the horrifying picture of Patrick once more. This time, however, his blood-soaked mouth moved a little bit, as if Patrick was trying to say something. I couldn't exactly hear what he was trying to say, so I just assumed that he was just mumbling and not really saying much of anything at all. The scene then cut back to both SpongeBob and his parents looking down at Patrick with a mix of guilt and shame spread across their faces. Is there anything that we can do to help him? SpongeBob asked. As of right now, no. Your friend's in a coma and we're not too sure when he's going to wake up fr from it. If he wakes up at all, the doctor muttered. Both SpongeBob and his parents both cringed at the very thought of Patrick dying. The best thing I can say for you all to do is give him some time to recover. That's all I can say. The doctor chimed in before walking out of the door. SpongeBob and Patrick's family soon left the room as well, as it seemed like they really weren't in the need really needed in the room. SpongeBob was the last one to walk out of the room and close the door shut. He takes a look around the hospital area to see if he can try and talk with Patrick's parents. But instead, there was a note taped to the door, which Spongebob pulled off. The camera then cut to show the contents of said note, which panned downwards as Spongebob read it. Dear Mr. Squarepants, We both want to apologize for arguing with you back there. It wasn't right of either of us to talk to you like that in that kind of attitude. In fact, we deserve much more of a punishment for what we have caused Patrick to be in the state that he's in. So it's with a heavy heart that we relinquish any contact with our son for his sake. We both know for a fact that you'll be a better influence on our son's life, and so we put our trust in you that you'll help him get better. As for us, we don't want to cause any more problems, so we're moving away. It's honestly for the better. I'll be honest here, I didn't exactly get what both Patrick's parents were really trying to say, but it seemed like Spongebob knew all too well. The camera cut to Spongebob crumpling the note in his hands and throwing it down in a fit of anger, and then walks out of the hallway, and the scene fades out. After a few seconds, the screen returns. Spongebob is in his living room, who apparently can't sleep due to the fact that he's been walking aimlessly all around in his house in his PJs. As he walks around the room, he starts to talk to himself. What am I going to do? Patrick's parents were supposed to help with Patrick's condition, and they just run off like that? It's been three days, three whole days since I've heard from them. Spongebob, in a fit of rage, beat his fist on the table. Talk about parents of the year. Spongebob muttered angrily as he sat down on the table that he had struck. But I don't know what I'm going to do. Patrick's not exactly the brightest light bulb in the closet, and trying to get him to eat keep him from eating sugar is like trying not to breathe for the guy. Spongebob let out a defeated sigh and slumped his head over towards the tabletop. As he does this, the doorbell suddenly rings. Spongebob gets up from his seat and casually walks over to the door and opens it up. Turns out it was Sandy and Mr. Krabs who was standing outside of the house. Mr. Krabs? Sandy? What are you guys doing here? Spongebob asked. Well, me boy -o, I heard about your little issue, and I just wanted you to come over to see if you were alright, Patrick says in a rather selfless kind of way. And I'm here for the same reason, Spongebob. How you been holding up? Sandy says in her usual country accent. It's been... bad. Really bad, actually. Patrick's parents left him with nothing and just moved away like that. While well, I'm here wondering to myself how I'm going to help Patrick at keeping up with his diet, and most importantly, stressing out over the fact that I might... Spongebob closed his eyes, and then closed his mouth shut and shuddered. Sandy and Mr. Krabs both looked at each other, and they both went up to Spongebob and sat next to him, holding him, trying to comfort him. Hey, 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 boy -o. You don't need to worry so much. Patrick will be alright. He's a fighter, and he'll get through this. Yes, yeah, Spongebob, Sandy interjected. If Patrick can survive my numerous science experiments, the ice cold in my tree dome, and even having his water helmet off for a long period of time, I'm sure that he can survive this, Sandy said. The camera then panned down to Spongebob, who looked up towards the others and smiled. Thanks, guys. It really means a lot to me that you'd... Spongebob was interrupted with Squidward barraging in the door and popping his head in. 
Is it true? Squidward asked before running in. Is it true that Patrick's in a coma? With diabetes? Squidward asked this time with a hint of glee that made me feel rather unnerved. Yeah, SpongeBob said, his smile now gone and reverted back into his depressed form. Squidward then get then looks at the others for a bit, with a bit of shock, and then does something that nearly made me want to punch the living shit out of my computer screen in complete rage. Squidward proceeds to get a bunch of party decorations and start decorating them around the house in almost an instant, and begin to dance around and start having a party, chanting away as he danced, No more Patrick! See ya, Sarfish! And other disgustingly mocking phrases. Both Sandy and Mr. Krabs look absolutely horrified, yet disgusted at the very sight of what Squidward was doing. However, SpongeBob just got up from where he had slapped down, and lifted his head up to reveal a look of complete hate, anger, and rage plastered onto SpongeBob's face. SpongeBob slowly walked across the room, where Squidward had set up a music box to play the typical party music that the Spongebob series tend to play as well, often as possible. And without another word, he grabbed the box, took it, and threw it on the ground, smashing it into pieces. Squidward then looked over at Spongebob with an annoyed look. Hey, where did the music go? Spongebob then turned his head. The same look of hate and anger splattered on his face. And he began walking, well, stomping actually, towards Squidward. Squidward, of course, walked backwards in fear at what SpongeBob was going to do to him. After a few seconds of walking backwards, Squidward backs himself into a wall. SpongeBob, now breathing heavily, glares at Squidward, Squidward before grabbing him by the collar of his shirt and pulling him towards his face. You better take that back, tentacles! SpongeBob growled as steam poured out of his nose in anger like a wild bull. <laughs> Why should I? Squidward taunted, albeit with much hesitation. As a response to this, the screen cut to SpongeBob letting out a loud scream before punching the wall just inches away from Squidward's head. Why should you? SpongeBob screamed. I'll give you a reason why. My best friend is in the hospital right now, possibly dying from a disease that he can't even wake up from. He's in a coma. I'm sitting here stressed out like crazy, wondering if he, wondering if he's even going to be alive. And here you are, dancing and partying, partying like it's something to celebrate. Squidward starts to sweat profusely from his brow before turning the tables over to SpongeBob. If anything, he deserves it for all the garbage that he's put me through. He's stalked me, destroyed my house numerous times, ruined my Sundays, and so many other things. He'd be doing the world a favor if he just died already. Squidward yelled. The camera then went back to SpongeBob, who at this point had already had a death glare on him. His face started to become beet red with anger. Then in an instant... SpongeBob lunged at Squidward and literally started to beat the living shit out of him. And I mean about as brutally as you would think. He knocked out a few of Squidward's teeth, broke his nose, and gave a few bloody eye a few black eyes as well. In fact, the brawl itself was becoming so bad that both Sandy and Mr. Krabs had to run up and restrain SpongeBob. Once SpongeBob had been restrained, the camera went back to show Squidward who was now cowering in the corner as cartoony blood poured from his nostrils and mouth. If you ever want to blame someone, blame me. I'm the one who made the decision between the two of us. He's not to blame here. I am. Patrick doesn't know any better. He can't even eat without my help. SpongeBob screamed at the top of his lungs. SpongeBob, calm down, Sandy interjected. Yeah, Boyle, don't let him get in your head. Mr. Krabs began, but you need to stay strong for Patrick. SpongeBob at this point calmed down a little bit, but still refrain, but still retained that pissed off look. The scene, the scene then cut to Squidward, who finally gets himself up, shaking. He then looks over at the angry Sponge. Get out and never come back. SpongeBob says coldly. Squidward begins to cry as he runs out of SpongeBob's house and back into his own. 
Sandy and Mr. Krabs both place Spongebob down, and Spongebob immediately starts running towards the hospital, to which Sandy and Mr. Krabs, in a surprised kind of way, run after him. The scene then fades back to the hospital area, with the sole exception of it being nighttime, with Spongebob running down the road and into the hospital itself. The screen then cuts to Spongebob running towards Patrick's door until he crashed, as well as with Sandy and Patrick, into the doctor from earlier on in the episode. Spongebob, what in tarnation's gotten into you? Sandy yelled. Yeah, Boyle, what are you thinking? Mr. Krabs rebutted. I'm sorry, I... I just need to see him. I just need to see him. Spongebob's car cries out. Well, it's a good thing that you actually all showed up. Uh, before I continue, I, m I need to ask. Are the two of you friends or acquaintances of Mr. Star? The doctor asks Sandy and Mr. Krabs. Yes, Doc. We are. Sandy responded. Well, I was going to call you, but since you're all here, I'm afraid I have some bad news. Your friend... Your friend in there isn't doing well at all. In fact, just now, he's gone, the doctor said. Everyone's eyes widen in shock at this message. Spongebob it looks like he's at the point of a freaking mental breakdown. What, what do you mean he's gone? Spongebob whimpered. Besides the machines that he's hooked up to, I'm afraid that your friend's nothing else more but a vegetable now. We've done everything that we possibly could to try and help him, but we just don't know what happened. He just started convulsing and... By the time we got there, he was already gone. The only things that are obviously keeping him alive now are the, are the machines. Now, I know that this is hard to take in, but... I'm sorry. I'm really sorry for your loss. Now, before I say or do anything else, I need to ask you if it's okay for me to pull the plug, the doctor asked. Huh? How long ago did he? Sandy whimpered, just as he walked in the door. I'm sorry again, everyone. Now, if you'd like, you can go and say your goodbyes before I... Um pull the plug, the doctor said solemnly. All three of them nod in agreement and then proceed to Patrick's room. I honestly at this point felt really bad for everyone, well with the exception of Squidward that is. I mean, now that I think about it, I can really see why this episode wasn't air aired. I mean, for one, the entire episode itself was very mature for a Spongebob episode. Which, in my honest opinion, really isn't that bad of an idea. I mean, it'd be awesome, but I could kind of see the trouble. And the fact of the matter that it would get so much backlash from fans and parents alike. Anyway, upon making their way into the hospital room where Patrick laid at, the screen faded once more, and then faded to show Patrick's nauseating face. However, this time, it was so much worse. Like before in the episode, everything was pitch red, with the usual hospital equipment and the like. However, Patrick himself was honestly ten times worse than what he originally looked. His body, from the lower jaw down to his stomach, showed the bottom jaw of Patrick's skull, followed by his windpipe and his internal organs. Now, compared to how a normal human, human being's internal organ structure is supposed to be, the way Patrick's organs were laid out was like a fucking dumpster. His lower as well as larger intestines were pushed up towards the front of Patrick's windpipe. His heart was lying dead center in the middle of the gory mess, not moving, not beating. Now, I've seen a lot of that gore. I mean, I stared at it for quite some time. I don't know why I did, but I did, 
and I know for a fact that there were at least a stomach or something else that was there. But honestly, if there were any there, it would have probably been overlapped by the mess of small intestines that were there. So maybe it might have just been my imagination at the time, but I don't even know anymore. Now, I know that the image itself is rather gross, but to be honest, after seeing that image, I wound up skipping lunch that day. After a few minutes of this image showing and everybody else pretty much crying like crazy, which in and of its own self was relatively understandable, I mean, their friend had just died, it finally cut back, it finally cut back, and back to Sandy, Mr. Krabs, and the doctor standing next to Patrick's bed once more. SpongeBob, as you would have guessed, was crying hysterically, with much more seriousness than his comedic crying habits that he usually has in the show. Everyone at this point starts to take their turns saying their last words to Patrick. SpongeBob starts up first. I'm s I'm so sorry, buddy. I'm sorry that I wasn't there to help you. I'm sorry for all the times that I that I fed you all that junk. I'm sorry for being a bad friend to you. I'm so sorry. Had I known that this would have happened, I wouldn't have taken you to Goofy Goobers. I, I would have taken you somewhere else. We could have went jellyfishing. We could have went somewhere else. We could have went somewhere else, buddy. But no. And I knew that you were sick, too. At least... At least that's what I remember seeing. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm, I'm a failure. I failed you. I failed you. SpongeBob then falls down to the floor and continues to cry. Sandy is the next one to speak. Hey there, Patrick. Hi. Well, I, I really... <sighs> Sandy pauses for a bit, trying to find some kind of right words to say. She sighs and then places her hand on Patrick's shoulder. I want to thank you, Patrick. If it wasn't for you and SpongeBob, I wouldn't have really gotten to know Bikini Bottom so well. In fact, I, can, I really do consider you a friend. Sure, you were a little bit of a nuisance sometimes, but you were a great friend to me. Thank you for everything. I, I really am grateful. I'm definitely going to be playing you one of my songs during your funeral. I promise you, Patrick, I'm going to make sure of it that that funeral is amazing for you. You've been a very good friend to me. You really have been. You've been a good friend to everyone. You may have messed up in the past, but you know what? That's fine. We all do. But you, you're different. You couldn't control half the things that you did. I'm also sorry for ever wanting to kill you or act nasty to you. If anything, I probably would, if I'd known what would happen now, I would have... Sandy pauses once more and wipes away a few tears from her eyes. I would have shown a lot more how much of I, I appreciate you being a friend to me. I would have done that for you. Thank you so much for being a good friend to me, Patrick, and thank you for helping me get over my thing with Texas. Thank you. Sandy then steps back and starts to slowly cry as well, although not as hard as SpongeBob was. Mr. Krabs was next. He had a look of complete guilt and shame on his face as he stared down at Patrick's limp body. Hey, aboyo. Where do I begin? I know I've not been good to you. I really haven't. I haven't been good whatsoever, actually. I've used you for money. I've done so many horrible things. I really don't even know. Well, actually, I do know 
Well, actually, I do know, Boyle. Spongebob told me a lot how you actually look up to me. I'm surprised that you'd actually want to look up to me like that, despite the fact that I'm a cheapskate. <sighs> Patrick, uh, I had a family member that I lost as well to diabetes. I'm gonna change myself, Patrick, just for you. I promised you I'm gonna do that to you. I'm gonna help pay for all your funeral. I'm gonna make sure of it like Sandy said, that your funeral is about as great as it possibly can be. I don't care how much money I wind up spending. I'm gonna change my ways for you, Patrick. I promise you that. That's not ever going to stop. I'm gonna change myself and be a better crab to you, Spongebob, to my daughter Pearl, and more importantly for you too, Patrick. I guess that's really all I have to say. Thank you for being a good friend to me, even when I know I really didn't deserve it. I do consider you a friend, and thank you. Mr. Krabs sat back, and then with that, the doctor took the sheets and covered Patrick's head with it. He then and once he does that, he pulls the plug, and the heart monitor flatlines. The doctor takes one final look at Patrick, and then to the others, and nods his head. The episode cuts to black once more, and it's out there that I decided to pause it. I don't know why exactly, but I need a little bit of time to really recover from that part. Yes, I know it was quite some time, but it still gets to me. I can promise you one thing, though. The next update I do is not going to be as heartwarming or anything like such. It just isn't. Hello there, my little shadows. It's me again, your master, the Shadow Reader. I hope you all enjoyed this little tale of horror. I honestly hope I didn't traumatize you too much after this. If you're new here and want to become one of my little shadows, then hit that subscribe button down below and also make sure to turn on post notifications so that you can be the first to watch my brand new content when it comes out. <laughs> Until then, Sweet dreams, my little shadows. <laughs>